Hi, my name is Alba Monroy. I'm with ABM Property Management and today I will be introducing you a panel of lawyers that will be discussing different topics in the HOA world. I'd like to introduce Brandon Fernald, Thomas Ware, and Craig Foy. And today we will be discussing the, top, the following topic, harassment by board members slash community members towards management. And the first question I'm going to ask will go towards uh, Brandon. Brandon, what is obliga the obligation, what do obligate, <laughs> sorry, what obligations do board members have to stop harassment of management agents? Um, ultimately, the management company is going to be indemnified or the board or the association is going to be responsible for damage to the management company. And so if you've got a situation where a board member or a community member is um, harassing or threatening or what have you, a management employee it's ultimately, it seems to me, in the interest of the association um, to take reasonable measures uh, to stop the harassment. What do you think, Tom? Uh, I would, I agree to a certain extent. Um, the fact is you have to make sure you uh, do not have a hostile work environment, but the steps you take in order to uh, protect the management obviously depends on the type of harassment you're talking about. Um, I think all homeowners in a homeowners association have the right to complain to their board and to their property manager within reasonable um, realms about uh, we're not happy with the property manager, we're not happy with the board, we're not happy with what's going on in the, in the uh, association. So I don't think the board has the uh, right or the authority to stop that type of communication, but there's a point in time where it goes beyond just mere you know, expressing their free speech where it becomes harassive or obtrusive to the property manager. And at that point in time, I do think the homeowner says has an obligation to step in and take steps. So can you give me some examples of when you feel that the association should be stepping in to stop that type of harassment? Well, I could give you a very extreme one. I, there was a homeowner's association where a homeowner was complaining to the property manager and came in and brought a gun and, and brandished the gun. Obviously, in that situation, the board uh, there's a dangerous condition. There's a gun there and the board has to take steps to kind of enjoin that and, pre and prevent that person from presenting that dangerous condition again. And so they went to court, got an injunction, ordering that this person, one, couldn't have the gun in presence of the um, property manager or any of the meetings, and two, that they couldn't come to the meetings. So that's the type of example where I think the board ha obviously has to uh, step out and do something to prevent the offensive activity. What do you think, Craig? Well, I think typically you're going to have an escalating situation. Uh, People who are very involved in the situation are going to start at a very low uh, level, and if they are not then uh, reminded to be courteous and respectful, things tend to escalate. So at some point, it can get to an escalated level that becomes very serious, for example, the gun. But I bet you that the in that situation, that individual didn't just jump from being concerned to pulling out a gun. I'm sure there were incidents along the line that escalated. And so I think it's very important that the board set a very positive uh, tone of respect for all views and try and keep things from escalating to the point where they get out of hand and actually become harassment. So you're saying that basically the associations should be able to identify early on um, and try to take action early on? and not wait till an incident like somebody bringing a gun to a meeting um, perhaps happens. So what would you say that uh, an association would need to do to try to prevent uh, you know, a disgruntled homeowner coming in and yelling and screaming and then escalate to like a gun incident, for example? Well, I think it's important that you show respect for their viewpoint because in their eyes, their viewpoint is very, very important and they also feel that they have the right to say whatever they want to say, whatever they want to say it. So the idea is to engage with them when things aren't really out of control and try and understand what's their concern, how can that concern be addressed to the point where they are satisfied with how the board is responding to them and try and prevent it from escalating to the point that it becomes a serious situation. So I think it's really a matter of, of decorum and how people are treated by the board and, how, and you expect them to respond accordingly. Let's, let's pretend that it's an actual board member that actually is harassing the property manager. Can the board prevent a board member from contacting a property manager? 
I think a board can prevent a board member to uh, from talking to a property manager um, because of the fact that the entity itself is the employer of the management company and the board can adopt protocols um, with respect to who interacts with the management company, who interacts with the attorney, um, and adopt that in board meetings to establish this or minimize um, altercations. Um, the caveat being that you know the directors have a, a, a right to see the records of the association. So in doing that, you, you have to be able to accommodate that in director's inspection rights, but at the same time, you can, I think, adopt rules that prevent a obstreperous director from harassing a particular property manager. So let's say that that was the case and the board identified that there was an issue with a particular board member. Um, how, how would you say that uh, the HOA handle asking that director to basically refrain from contacting their management or, or how, how would you set the parameters and how would that directive or that resolution come about? Well, I, I think again, so similar to what Craig said, is that that type of situation is would have to be pretty extreme before I would say advocate. We're not going, you know, you're not going to let a director talk to a property manager. So it, it's an escalation. So ho hopefully, in the beginning, you're adopting uh, certain um, protocols for your board and how to in interact with each other. And I think one of the things that, in my experience, that uh, results in problems with among board members and management oftentimes is this idea that they're a lack of communication that the people don't, don't feel like the other side is listening to them. they don't have the right to do that and uh, sometimes what happens is the squeaky wheel becomes a problem in, in the uh, mind of the majority of the directors or people operating and so they have a tendency to you know almost shut them out either intentionally or unintentionally and that results in, oftentimes in that type of director taking more extreme actions towards the other members and the, and the management um, so if you could avoid that escalation that would be the first step in trying to um, protect the management and the agents and even affecting a more effective operation of the association what do you think, Brandon? Um, well, I think Tom hit the nail on the head early on. Folks have a right to obviously complain, as do board members to management, um, to vendors uh, that are working for the association, etc. So there's a fine line, I think, between um, allowing uh, folks to have their say, and at the same time, if you act too soon on sort of squelching something, you're sort of stepping on a person's uh, First Amendment rights, if you will, to complain to their association about uh, whatever they, they, they think is pertinent. Um, relating it to real life, you have, you're, you're perfectly uh, able to protest. You can't go uh, start destroying property. And so I think when it gets beyond the point of legitimate uh, um, complaining and into either sexual harassment or just inappropriate conduct that is above and beyond the act of complaining or speaking your mind, that's when uh, the board would need to step in, I think, and take additional, additional steps. Any final thoughts, Craig? Yes, again, I think it's a, it's a matter of respect. It, it's <laughs> interesting how human nature is, but people will kill people if they think they were disrespected. So I think if you set the proper tone of respect, both towards the board, towards the member, and towards the management company, and make sure the homeowner understands that he can address his concerns in a respectful way. He will get then get a respectful response. But if he isn't respectful, then that's not productive to resolving his concerns. And by respecting his concerns and trying to find a solution to his concerns, I think is a, is the best formula. Now his concerns may be just to be disruptive then you have a different situation and then it becomes a little more complicated. But I think oftentimes people, they feel very strongly about something that may not be important to me. But if I respect that it's important to them, then hopefully we can find some common ground that will help us resolve that dispute so that it, 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 the, the homeowner is, is satisfied with the uh, concern being addressed. So to finalize this, we're basically saying, if I'm hearing this correctly, that Number one, obviously homeowners have a right to complain and um, as, as long as it's a valid complaint, if it does not borderline harassment where um, the, the management company is being put in, in, in a difficult situation or in danger 
and that both obviously the board and the management company has to work together to try to number one if it starts with a complaint to actually address the complaint to try to avoid from escalation but if it gets to a point of escalation then the board should step in I think the key point is I mean a homeowner and a director they can make complaints that even there are not valid they even if you empirically say oh that's ridiculous but the first uh, step is to uh, you know uh, to acknowledge that and not try to qu uh, squelch it from making the complaints and the key is really is this um, you know these complaints are these somehow interfering with the operation of the association either you know practically from carrying out day-to-day -day obligations maintenance obligations or by creating some type of dangerous condition and if it's one of those latter two um, circumstances then the board does have authority I think to step in and um, and hopefully we you know we start from a you know less intrusive um, remedy and then quite frankly the there are extreme remedies where you go to court and get injunctions and stop the that type of activity Excellent. So this wraps up our first segment of lawyer panel questions and stay tuned for uh, other questions that we will bring to you in an effort to educate our homeowners and our board members in regards to different scenarios in the HOA world.